Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. All right, so the first mention of was wounded is found in First Chronicles 10, verse 3. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was wounded of the archers. Then said Saul to his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. So Saul took a sword and fell upon it. So Saul, there in verse 3, was wounded of the archers. Jeremiah 50 verse 29 called together the archers against Babylon all ye that bend the bow camp against it round about let none thereof escape recompense her according to her work according to all that she hath done do unto her for she hath been proud against the Lord against the Holy One of Israel so as you well know already there is a battle a spiritual battle for souls, for the minds of men. And it doesn't appear to me that Saul was prepared for this battle. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 8 says, For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So the trumpet is the word of God. So let me give you an example of an uncertain sound. Are you saved or are you being saved? Notice how the King James Version says, Unto us which are saved. Every other version, such as the New King James Version, the NIV, the ESV, the NLT, says are being saved. So that's an uncertain sound. You're not even certain that you're saved. You're being saved. And that's an attack by Satan himself to try to corrupt your mind from the simplicity that is in Christ. So it appears to me that Saul, given as an example to us, was entangled with the affairs of this life. 2 Timothy 2, 3-4 Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Galatians 5 verse 1 through 4 Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I Paul say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So it appears that Saul got entangled with the affairs of this life, with the yoke of bondage. And notice he says, uncircumcised in verse 4, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. So Saul here in chapter 10 was wounded of these archers who were uncircumcised. So it seems to me like Saul was not prepared for this battle, and he did not have that shield of faith to quench those fiery darts of the wicked. Ephesians 6 verse 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The second mention of was wounded takes us to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Let's start in verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So he was wounded for our transgressions, referring to Jesus Christ. Psalms 103 verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Hebrews 9 verse 15, And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So again, we are in a spiritual battle, and the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Psalms 55 verse 18 says, He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. Psalms 18 verse 17, He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. So you see, they are too strong for us, for our flesh. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all transgressed, for sin is transgression of the law. But Christ, He came in the flesh. God was man a fest in the flesh. And He became sin for us, that me and you might be made the righteousness of God in him so praise god for that for the free gift of salvation for the mediator for the redemption of those transgressions that were under the first testament so that old man had to die saul saul why persecutest thou me that corn of wheat had to fall into the ground and die so that it could bring forth fruit romans 8 verse 3 for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So you see, this is talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory. He actually has fulfilled the law. He is the life, the way, the truth, the life. He is the life that none of us have lived. Okay, You and I, friend, we have not lived a perfect life. We have sinned. We have transgressed. We are guilty. This is why we must trust in Christ because He is the innocent blood. Okay, He is without sin and He is our righteousness. And He was wounded for our transgressions. The third and final mention of was wounded takes us to Zechariah chapter 13, verse 6. Let's start in verse 4. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he hath prophesied. Neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. But he shall say, I am no prophet, I am an husbandman, for man taught me to keep cattle for my youth. And one shall say unto him, what are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And just take a look at how stupid and foolish these false Bibles are. So the King James Version, the King James Bible says, wounds in thine hands look at the new american standard bible it says wounds between your arms what in the world english standard version wounds on your back new living translation wounds on your chest new international version wounds on your body and it's so stupid because people will say oh they all say the same thing you know all the bibles they say the same thing uh well clearly they don't Psalms 22 verse 16 says, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Proverbs 12 verse 18, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Let's 
Let's look at a couple other verses to end this video with wound or wounded. Psalms 109 verse 22. For I am poor and needy and my heart is wounded within me. So you see, this is a wounded heart. Proverbs 18 verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? Mark 12 verse 4. And again he sent unto them another servant, and at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. So you see, this can be a wounded heart, a wounded spirit, or a wounded head. This is why we must put on the whole armor of God and have that helmet of salvation to protect our mind and that breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts. I'll end this video with 1 Corinthians 8, verse 11 through 12. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died? But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ.